thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. I'm really looking forward to our conversation. Oh, me too. And with that, I will just jump right in. Sure. My first question is, can you tell us a little bit about who you play and what she is up to at the start of the show? Sure. Um, I play Nikki Cat in this uh, series and I'm a, um, uh, Lily Rose Depp plays Jocelyn and she's a, uh, you know, very famous artist and I play her record label ex- executive. I'm, I'm in charge of her record label. So exciting. Yes. And when you found out that you had booked the role, what yeah. about your character were you most excited to explore on screen and bring to life in the series? Uh, I've been most excited to bring to life uh, this character in this series because she calls out every elephant in the room. And I feel like we need more people like that. It's it's a great quality, actually, these days, because everybody seems to kind of be going along uh, what they hear on TV. They believe it and they do it. And Nikki is having none of that. She's kind of a rebel. And then the show features such an incredible ensemble cast all across the board. And I'm curious what it was like for you to work with such an incredibly talented team of actors. It was to work with this team of actors is one of just been one of the best experiences of my life for real. I mean, and also I don't have uh, kids. So showing up on set with all these beautiful, really smart, talented, funny artists is just a joy. We have such a good time. I miss them when we're not working, and uh, it's been really fun to see everybody here in Cannes. That's great. And then seeing as the show takes place in Los Angeles and then also in the entertainment industry, um, I'm curious if you used any of your personal experiences um, in L.A. or in the industry to inform your decisions when you were portraying your character? That's a really great question. And, um, yeah, I do think this show... Uh, cuts across like it's not just uh, about you know uh, Hollywood or the the entertainment industry it it, you know even though that's the story what what I feel like is the dynamics that Sam's captured between people kind of can remind people of their family um, of their workplace, wherever it is, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You know, as soon as you get into somebody's in charge, somebody's supposed to produce something. I mean, that can be the owner of a restaurant and a waitress too. Do you know, like it doesn't, it, it, it's everybody. Um, those, those relationships are what are kind of fleshed out and like, uh, you know, I think, yeah, I think, um, I did. I don't want to get into them too much because I don't want that to get in the way when people are watching. You know, I want them to just see the character. But you are correct. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, you would have to. And then I know you mentioned that you're at Cannes and you're reunited with everyone. What is it like to be there at such a prestigious festival and having the show premiere there? It's really it's fun. I mean, it's it's uh, it's very glamorous here. You know, there are a lot of sequins and feathers and, um, uh, you know, yachts and beautiful scenery. And it's just chandeliers. It's gorgeous. Um, But it's also a lot of people who work uh, in the film industry are here and you that's a great feeling that like that that the film industry is surviving still um you know it's still happening there's all these creative people that are making a living doing this and it's so it's very exciting it's a dream come true it's very dreamy here it really is i think for everyone that's incredible and especially i feel like after covid when it felt like who knows if anything exactly. would ever be normal again exactly exactly so yeah. reassuring to kind of have yes. some normalcy I just think we need to evolve even more so that like you'd be sitting here in person. That's what I want. I want to get rid of the tech. I want the tech out. (laughs) Agreed. Yeah. That's the next step. That's the next step. We're face to face. We got. We got to do. We all have to start insisting on face to face. (laughs) (laughs) But you know what? We'll take what we can get. I'm. I'm happy to see you like this. I'm just saying the goal. The goal is. Yeah. Next year, do face to face. Let's say that. <laughs> yes, that's the goal. Maybe next year. Yeah, maybe next year. If it doesn't work out, we'll do this again. But yeah. 
maybe. <laughs> um, and then you mentioned like the glamour of Cannes and everything. And I also noticed in the show, the production value is incredible from the Isn't set it? to the costumes. Well, also what, what people, I want them to talk about more is it's on film. Sam didn't shoot this. It's not digital. It looks different. It is different. There's a depth to it. It's beautiful. And Marcel Rev is like incredible. His cinematographer. What what a joy to to just watch that. Even if you watched it with the sound off, you're seeing something really beautiful. So for sure, it was so stunning, and the film yeah. thing just makes it feel like just something else. It makes it right. feel almost like otherworldly in a way. Yeah, and I think people also should watch for you know, Abel has a very strange, funny sense of humor, and so does Sam. And there are two guys working together. You know, like I, I think people take things so seriously these days, and you just kind of got to go like, you know, maybe people are having fun you know, um, on a level, you know, and then it gets dark and serious and then it's about something, but maybe also sometimes it's just goofy. It's so powerful when you see people creating something that is what they want to create. Exactly. Yes. Sam would love to hear you say that. Yes. <laughs> you could tell him I said that. Yes, I will. Be tell <laughs> I, I think people should be able to create what they want to create. So without giving anything away, of course, um, what are you most excited for audiences to see when the show comes out? Uh, well, as we were talking about, I'm really excited for them to see Marcel Rev's work in this too. Um, and I, I'm, I'm very excited for them to see something that is not caring so much what people think, you know, and it's not following the kind of group think things going on. It's just, this is this crazy story. And people, I, I think, you know, it's in some respects, people won't be able to relate to it, but then they'll be able to relate to it in ways they can't uh, predict yet. Yeah, it'll be exciting to see how people can see themselves in these characters in different and unexpected ways. Perhaps. Right. Exactly, exactly. And how great is Rachel Sinat too? Oh my gosh, incredible, incredible. Isn't she, isn't she funny? So yeah. great. Like yeah. everybody, this whole cast, Divine Joy and Moses Sumney and Troy and Lily Rose and Abel and, you know, I have, but, oh, uh, oh my God, I can't, you know who's so wonderful is uh, playing her manager, Hank Azaria. Yes, like yes. Rose manager, And he's so wonderful to work with. Like the, we'll do takes and Sam will call cut and then, uh, uh, Hank and I will be looking at each other just going like, can you believe we get to do this? So, yeah. Like, That's the it, best. That's yeah, the best. It is, it is. Yeah. The cast is sensational, and I love how everyone sort of brings something different to the table. It was really cool to see. I'm curious also if you have a favorite memory from filming? Oh, I have a few. That's a great question. I love, I mean, we were shooting at Abel's house. It was very lovely there. Like I remember just wandering out into the backyard. There were, there was a kind of like couch unit across the grass. And I would just, if, if, you know, when I had a break, um, you know, just lay there and in the sun. And I just thought, this is a wonderful day, <laughs> you know, like I just shot, Sam would write these incredible monologues for me and we would shoot them. And then I could get, you know, once it was, that was done and in the can, I could relax and just take a minute and take it all in. And I thought like, I'm very happy with this. And it's really great that you had that opportunity to be present because I imagine sometimes in this industry, it's so easy to just kind of like be going so go, go, go that you don't even have a second to take it in. There's a lot of that. Exactly. Yeah. It's nice to be able to take things in. I had a lot of laughs with uh, Troy and Lily Rose and Hank and, you know, it's just, uh, oh, and Eli Roth, who couldn't be here. So we, I don't want to forget Eli's so funny. He's, he's um, editing a film of his, so he's not here, but he's definitely, we all remember him. <laughs> he makes, he makes me laugh a lot. If you had to describe the show in five words, Okay. What would you say? Smart, funny, dark, scary, beautiful. <laughs> and then I just have one final question for you. Sure. 
Um, this is sort of like a bigger one. I know we've touched on it a little bit, but sure. I'm curious, um, what do you hope that the viewers of this show will take away and then bring into their own life after watching it? I hope after they watch it that they feel a little less lonely if they're actually uh, people who are wishing that there was more entertainment that wasn't kind of catering to uh, certain narratives now that are very heavy in society. I think that, you know, it's it's it, it's weirder than that. And, and I think that it's kind of fun and I hope that they can then if they see it go into their lives and, you know, certain things that Nikki says or certain things that Jocelyn says, like when she says, you know, when she's asked by the, uh, Hari Neff is wonderful too. Hari is such a great, and Hari, uh, you know, plays the Vanity Fair, uh, writer and asks, uh, Lily Rose, uh, Lily Rose's character, Jocelyn asks her, uh, who do you answer to? And Lily Rose takes a pause and then she says, God. And I think that, that's something people can take into their lives as well, that they're, they're not answering to MSNBC. They're not answering to, you know, uh, somebody on cable uh, news. They're, they're, they're answering to something else that is a mystery that, you know, a higher power. <laughs> For sure. Yes. Well, I have absolutely loved chatting with you. It was you such too. a honor. And I can't thank you enough for your time and congratulations on the show. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking with you too, for real. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the festival and I hope to see you again soon. You too. Yeah. We'll see each other in person someday. Yes. Yes. We'll see each other in person and we can laugh about when we were on Zoom. Exactly. All right. Have a great day. Hi, my name is Ashley. I'm with The Nocturnal. It is such an honor to meet you today. Hi, Ashley. It's so nice to meet you. So my first question is, can you tell us a little bit about your character and what you are up to when the show begins? Uh, I play Destiny. Destiny is Jocelyn's manager um, slash cool aunt slash older sister slash best friend. Uh, my character is put in place to, in some ways, be the truth teller, the voice of reason, the cheerleader for Jocelyn. Uh, she has a two-teamed manager comp management team, and uh, she brings a different perspective to it in which she helps her see things from all angles. You know, it it's tricky because she is grieving, uh, having that her mother has just died. So it is a little bit of walking on eggshells. But at the same time, it's just, it, it's someone there in her corner that really champions her. Yes, and Jocelyn definitely needs that. Someone kind of rooting for her yeah. and cheering her on. Um, I'm curious, what has been the most rewarding part of bringing your character to life on on screen for the show? The most rewarding part. Um, I, I just I'm really proud of what we've created and the role that I was able to create and to make her. I tried to really, I really wanted to make her stand out and be noteworthy, and I hope that I I had done that. Um, it, it's just, it's really cool uh, to have the opportunity to be a part of something like this, because these are special projects that come every once in a blue moon. This is not the norm. And so to have been a part of that is just, it's awesome. It's really awesome. The Idol features such a talented cast all across the board. What was it like for you to work with such a phenomenal team of actors? Oh, it, it was riveting. And it was so cool too, because some people, came into it as musicians and I started my career as a musician. So I definitely had empathy and excitement for them. And so it was just the coolest to see from people from all these different walks of life, kill it and lock in with one another and bring across such a wonderful performance. Absolutely. I think that you can sort of tell on screen how well everyone uh, like has great chemistry together and has all these different experiences that they're bringing forward on the show. It's really cool to see. Um, 
And then the show has such a captivating aesthetic. The production value is super impressive from the sets mm -hmm. and the lighting to the gorgeous costumes that you got to wear. I was obsessed with your sunglasses. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it like to create in that visually stunning space? Yeah, uh, well, that's Abel's house. Uh, so there's that. Uh, again, I knew from knowing what I know about Euphoria that aesthetically the show was going to be stunning. Um, and in regards to the wardrobe, I love fashion and getting dressed up and that sort of thing. And so, um, it was really awesome that I had the opportunity to collaborate with the costume designer and lend some of my clothes and stuff like that to make it happen. But I really wanted to have a sense where it's like her armor or her uniform. Um, and due to what you guys later figure out of uh, her past, she was actually a little bit more involved in this industry in a personal way, more so than people would imagine. And so because of it, I like that she's a bit more um, on or a little showy uh, in the sense of like, you will not quiet me, I will not hide, you know what I mean, type of mentality. And I really like that. That's awesome. And I think it's so interesting when the clothes both look incredible, but they also tell a story. So mm -hmm. I'm so excited to sort of see where where the story goes and how your Thank costume you. plan can't wait. So you're at Cannes now. Um, what is it like to be there and having the show premiere at such an incredible festival? It's overwhelming. It's so grand and and exuberant, far exceeding any. I mean, I've I've done the award shows in the states, and this is nothing like it. Even in even the Oscars, this is far far more grand, but also. What's beautiful about it is that it gives a true um, respect and reverence to to making art and making films. And so it's just been a dream come true. That's incredible. And I'm sure even more rewarding because there was a time during the pandemic where it was like, would this ever happen again? Would we ever get to experience film? So that's great that you're able to now. Yes. And then next question for you, um, without giving anything away, of course, what are you most excited for audiences to see when the show comes out and episodes roll out? Uh, the things I'm most excited to see uh, for folks to see is um, the behind the scenes inner workings, um, female empowerment, uh, yeah, those are the main ones. I, I think it's going to be really cool to see this woman navigating uh, and traversing her career. I I'm really excited for people to see that. For sure, for sure. Uh, and I imagine there may be a lot of these, but do you have a favorite memory that stands out to you from filming the show? Yeah, I think it was actually in between takes because there was a being that we were at his house, there was a holding room that we were in uh we had these huge almost adult size bunk beds and so we would hang out and it felt like summer camp we were just it was really amazing that we used that time to get to know each other a lot of times everybody just retreats back to their own trailer but we didn't have trailers because we were on location and so it was really great because i don't want to say it forced us to connect and get along but it happened and i'm eternally grateful for it that's so special and i love the summer camp vibe that's so cool. Um, and then I'm curious, so seeing as the show takes place in Los Angeles and in the entertainment in industry, mm -hmm. I'm curious if you used any of your personal experiences in LA or in the industry to inform your decisions when you were portraying your character? Yeah, I mean, I'm always trying to make the best strategic moves for myself. And so I think similarly, like when she has the pep talk, with her uh, while they're doing the music video, I've definitely had my own version of a pep talk of just kind of like, you know, they're not to be cocky, but they're here for you. And they're they're here to be of service to you and making your dream come true. So don't diminish yourself or feel bad. Be a professional, but go for it because no one's going to champion you more than yourself. Next question for you. I have two questions left. Um, if you had to describe the show in five words, what would you use? Daring, 
uh, exciting, cutting edge, honest. Um, yeah, those are the main ones I would think of. And then my last question for you today, it has been so lovely chatting with you. Uh, what do you hope that audiences and viewers will take away from watching The Idol? That things aren't always the way they seem from the outside looking in. Female empowerment, that we as women are stronger than we know. Uh, and at what price is it worth it to risk it all? For sure. I think those themes are definitely like absolutely going to be takeaways for people and i'm so excited for you and for the show and i can't wait to see how everything unfolds congratulations on everything it was so nice to meet you thank you for your time thank you